Ruth Nakayo was born with one short leg. It was amputated and she had to acquire an artificial limb, molded out of plaster material. She says it was very uncomfortable until she replaced it with a digital version. The old-fashioned limb is kind of is heavier than the, the 3D limb. I thought it would be maybe harder to use, but it is easier. In fact, I've learned to use it in a short time. So it's the same. Yeah. The only difference is that the 3D is lighter than the other one. Here at Kosu, a charity organization located about 25 kilometers outside the capital Kampala, many people like Nakaye have now acquired the lighter digital type. At the facility, the costs have been subsidized. However, the $400 minimum fee charged is still very high for an average Ugandan. In just six hours, technicians here are able to print a digital limb compared to the conventional method that takes up to five days. That means patients in need of artificial limbs are able to get them on time. Scanning takes place before the digital limb is printed. The way the printing happens is that plastic is deposited in a layer, one layer at a time. One layer, and then it moves up, and another layer, and it moves up, and another layer, and it builds a 3D object like that. It's kind of like if you took clay, I don't know if you've ever done this, but, and you make a spiral of clay, and you put that spiral around, and you build a pot that way, 3D printers work in exactly the same. Before this concept arrived in Uganda about two years ago, the manual method was being used which involves molding layers of plastics. The few functioning orthopedic workshops in Uganda use the manual method, which is time-consuming and tiring. 3D printing actually gives you a, a design to production, complete design tool chain that is done digitally. And so what you end up with is greater accuracy, you end up, in this case, with something that comes out quicker. And when you compare it to traditional methods, you end up incurring less waste. Because with the traditional methods, you use plaster casting and so forth, and the plaster casting ends up being a big mess and a disposal problem. At the moment, it's only this workshop at COSU that makes the digital limbs, and technicians say that the numbers are overwhelming. That's not helped by a shortfall in technicians, which the World Health Organization estimates at 40,000. Isabel Nakiria, CCTV, in Kampala.